Well, hello. Oh, me? Uh, I'm just reading. Oh, a very good book, yes. What's it about? Why, it's about statistics. Beautiful subject. Really? You're my statistics class? Well, welcome to my home. What would you like to know? Oh, there's a great deal to be known about statistics. Why, right here in this book, it tells me all I need to know. Beautiful book. Beginning statistics. Beautiful book. Why, statistics, I, I find it incredibly interesting. Um, when I think about it, I, I think about... I think about things that I read in the newspaper or keeping statistics on baseball players or basketball players or football players or or things that I read on Facebook or just studies or experiments and things of that nature. I, I think a, a great wonderful amount of things when it comes to statistics. But to be completely honest, statistics is really it's a science. A science of gathering and describing and analyzing data. Data? Why, those are the measurements that we're able to, um, that we're able to take on, on different people or places or things. Uh, it's the counts, the observations that we actually gather when we're looking at our population. But the idea, I guess, is that we want to gather data from a group of people and we want to take that data and try to interpret it, try to analyze it, and try to describe it to a group of people who might be interested in what we're talking about. And this book actually goes through a great deal of, of information when it comes to statistics. I mean, one of the reasons that I like to know about statistics is just to kind of know whether or not, uh, to be completely honest, if someone is bullshitting me when I read Facebook, or if my crazy uncle is really as crazy as I think that he is. I mean, look at this for example. Right here, my crazy uncle Tom seems to think that on average every day, 300,000 people die from ingesting batteries. It's crazy what you read on Facebook. It must be true. Or is it? I mean, in fact, there are a lot of things that I read online that just can't possibly be true. If you take 300,000, for example, every day and multiply it by 365, the number of people that must die from battery ingestion each year has got to be astronomical. In fact, impossible. There are only 7.5 billion people on this earth. How the hell are so many people dying from battery ingestion? But clearly this statistic came from somewhere. In fact, the reason I call it a statistic is because statistics actually has two meanings. It is the science of gathering, describing, and analyzing data, but it's also an actual numerical description of sample data. So it is a number that describes a sample. So when we say that what are the stats and somebody gives us a number, it's a number that comes from some type of sample. So what we really want to do is we want to get at the heart of what statistics is about. And so we really need to know what it is that my crazy uncle did to discover this statistic that 300,000 people die from ingesting batteries on average per day. So what do we do? What do we study? Well in here, it looks like what we do is we start up with a population. If you have a question that you want to ask about any group of individuals, the group of individuals that you want to know about is what we call our population. It's our particular group of interest. Our population doesn't have to be people. It could be places, it could be things, it could be electronics, it could be a whole slew of different objects. But the idea is that the population is the group of individuals that we want information about. And those group of individuals, that makes up our subjects. Well, our subjects, if we were talking about an experiment, um, but that group of individuals, that's going to be the, the people that we actually, or the people, places, or things that we actually study. And they make up the, the population. So when we want to ask a question about a population, for example, with this particular asinine assumption about batteries, maybe our population is everyone in the world. 
Now, it doesn't always have to be that big. It could simply be a population of Wayne State students, or Wayne State students this year, or freshmen at Wayne State, or we could be talking about just children in first grade, or like my son. We could be talking about a whole slew of, of different uh, groups of individuals. But if our population for this particular instance is the entire population of the world, uh, that's what we can try to study. So what are we studying? We're trying to study whether or not uh, you've died from ingesting batteries. So I guess what we'd have to do then is talk about the variable. The variable is the thing that changes from person to person. So for example here, the variable is, did you pass from ingesting batteries? And this varies from person to person. Of course, then that means that our population really has to include those that actually well, maybe technically our population shouldn't be everybody in the world. Maybe our population in this particular scenario are those that have, are recently deceased. Or just those that are deceased in general. So then the question is, what is the cause of death? And in this case, the variable is the thing that varies from person to person. That's why we call it a variable. So what is the variable in this particular instance? It's cause of death. The data then are the counts of the measurements that we then take from our, our particular individuals in the population, individuals being some individual part of the population. In this case, the data would be, uh, it would be gathered by just looking at the cause of death. This person passed away from ingesting a battery. This person passed away from um, uh, COVID-19. This person passed away from a uh, heart attack, things of that nature. The variable varies from person to person. So then the, the thing that we're trying to figure out is, and especially nowadays, uh, there's a lot of statistics online about cause of death, for instance, the ingestion of batteries. And the reason being that we want to compare it to other causes of death. Are these things, uh, for example, is COVID-19 as scary as people make it to be? And there's a lot of debate about how intense or how um, high the death rate is for something like COVID-19. In fact, it fills up your entire Facebook feed. And we try to compare it to other things and say, oh, look, more people are dying from ingesting batteries. Uh, but is it true? And that's what we have to do. We have to take a statistical study to actually figure that out. Now, there is a number, a real number of people that die from ingesting batteries. And that number would be very, very, very difficult to get because our population here is gigantic. And if you look at those people that have, are deceased at any given, uh, in the recently, that number is a gigantic number. Trying to get access to every single record would be uh, completely impossible. Um, but there is a number. There's a real number attached to that population. For example, there's a real number of people that are going to vote for the Republican, and there's a real number of people that are going to vote for the Democrat in the coming election. And that number for the population is what we call the parameter. So our ultimate goal in any statistical study is to try to figure out what that parameter is. Right? So if I want to know what is the actual number of people that passed away from ingesting batteries, then that number is the parameter when I look across the entire population of all people that have, that have uh, passed away recently. And to get that parameter, it's virtually impossible because I have to look at every single uh, person that has, has passed away. So what do we do instead then? What we do instead is we look for what's called statistics. We take a smaller sample, a subset of the population. And we try to use that sample to figure out what number of actual people passed away ingesting batteries. The sample is just a small subset. And so what we do then is we say, okay, we've got a sample of people that have passed away recently, and we've got their causes of death. And we try to take the information that we get from that sample and use it to make a guess about the entire population. So, for example, say that we took a sample of 50,000, and in that 50,000, 10,000 passed away from ingesting batteries. And say that we knew that, so that's one-fifth, say that we knew that 25,000 people have passed away in the past so many days or, or something like, along that line. So these numbers are completely inaccurate, but 
then that means that about, we would guess that maybe one-fifth of the entire population passed away from ingesting batteries, or 5,000 people if it was 25,000 people that made up the entire thing. So what we would do then is we use that sample to try to make a prediction about the population. And that, that brings us to this idea that there are really two different types of, or branches of statistics. One branch is descriptive statistics, which is we go out and we make a study, we study some population, or we study some sample, and we get some information, we take some data, and from that data we're actually able to describe what we found. So for example, suppose that I went out and I asked 100 people, uh, what's your favorite lollipop? And 27 of them said strawberry. Then descriptive statistics would say that, I would say, I went and asked 100 people, and 27 of them said that strawberry was their favorite lollipop. I've described what I've found. The other branch of statistics is called inferential statistics. And inferential statistics is it's the science of describing, uh, taking descriptive statistics and estimating population parameters. So now, I've asked 100 people what their favorite lollipop is, and they said 27 is strawberry. So this is 27%. Now, could I then make an inference about the entire population? Could I then say that 27% of all people like strawberry the best when it comes to lollipops? And the answer is it kind of depends. Inferential statistics is what we aim for. We're trying to take a sample and use it to make an inference about the entire population. And if we do it right, we can make that inference. Um, but if we do it incorrectly or with bias, then we really can't make that inference. And that's why our crazy uncles are able to get onto Facebook and tell us all sorts of crazy things that really can't possibly be true. It's because the statistics that they get are either misleading, completely inaccurate, or the inferences that are made because the sample is improperly chosen just can't be made. If you want to avoid that, one way to do it um, is to take a census. But a census is completely impossible. A census means that our sample is the population. So if we want to look at, for example, all Americans, and we want to know about them, we could take a sample, we could just ask a thousand Americans, or we could ask every single American. But there are about 330 million Americans, so it's going to be virtually impossible to ask them whatever our question is, whatever we happen to be studying. So because we can't run a census, typically we have to run a sample or look at a sample. And what does that mean? It means that in this course, to understand how we pick our sample, that's really the crux of this course. It's really what we want to figure out uh, when it comes to statistics. We want to figure out how, it, how we choose a good sample. How we make our sample so good that we can actually make inferences about the population. And if we can do that, if we can understand how statistics is conducted, if we can understand what people do to make a good study um, and how people describe or use their descriptive statistics and how they use their inferential, st uh, uh, inferential statistics, then we can really understand uh, whether or not we're able to call out our crazy uncles. Uh, and if we are, then great. And if we're not, then, then go back to the book and start studying some more because apparently your crazy uncle is telling you something that's completely impossible. You've got to be able to figure out how to tell them that that is completely impossible. And that's kind of my goal for this course. My goal is to have you understand statistics in a way that when you're reading a newspaper or when you're reading your Facebook feed or when you're talking to your family members at Thanksgiving, you can actually look them in the face and say, that's wrong. And then that way uh, you can actually determine, you can talk intelligently with your family members about uh, their inaccurate use of statistics. Unless, of course, they found a study that is legitimate, was done properly, and you can agree with them because they've chosen a study that where the inferential statistics is, is done properly. It's not a biased sample or, or things of that nature. Anyways, this is, this is really the beginning of statistics. I just wanted to throw a couple of vocab words out to you. And, and after all, you came into my living room and, and found me reading and and here we are talking about uh, something that's going to be uh, a really interesting thing to, to get to know this semester. 
So thanks for joining me, and uh, if you don't mind, I, I think I will get back to my book, and, and, I, and I will see you guys uh, tomorrow. You're still here. Okay. Well, if that's if you haven't had a chance to to check out the sign, and I don't know if you can read it all that well, it's something worth noting. Um, and and just so you know, this is this is iced tea. I, I just I wanted this to be one of those really nice fireplaces, roaring, you know, videos with uh, I think the 1950s, you know, something like that. But seriously, go away. We've got enough work to do tomorrow. Just go relax. Go rest. What the hell are you still doing here? I, I told you the video was done. I was just going to sit here and read a little bit longer. And at this point, this is kind of crazy. You're, you're just still sitting there watching the video, wondering when you should leave your screen. I mean, if you're still here and you can still hear me talking about this, you've actually sat here and watched your instructor just sit here in this chair in front of this Netflix fireplace for an extended period of time that you didn't have to be here. There's no more learning involved in this video. But for some reason, you just can't take the time to click the pause button, or the stop button, or the exit button, or rewind and watch for, like, the vocab. You're just still sitting there watching this, like a train wreck. About, I mean, for gosh, there's nothing else I'm going to tell you. Nothing else. There's, there's no extra spoilers. This thing doesn't even start until the next video. I, I don't have the letter out yet. I will put a letter out, and you'll be able to see... Uh, a new letter each time, or maybe two letters or three letters, and then you'll have to unscramble it at the end for that for that ability. But at this point in time, you're just watching a, a crazed lunatic talk from a chair about random things. And you could stop the video at any time. You don't have to keep watching this part. I'm serious. Well, I will turn the video off then.